Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're going on holiday. Vacay, baby. The island of Bali, Indonesia, deep in the South Asian archipelago. Stunning, beautiful, you got your mountains, your beaches, your reefs. Very pretty, you know, much like, much like the people in this old video. Though I'm not sure the people, uh, thought their time in Bali would end the way it did. With some of them not thinking at all. Let's give it a go. This uh, story, it's weird. Bit odd. So where to begin? Why not with the lady in the title of the video? It's usually a pretty decent place to start. See, before we get to Bali, we gotta go to Chicago, Illinois, home of Sheila Von Wies Mack, who, with a name like that, sounds like ancient European royal, the Habsburg dynasty or something. But she was just a regular old gal. Sheila was born in 1952 in Minneapolis and grew up in Gross Point, Michigan, home of the late Bob Bashara, Rip. She studied political science in Boston, she got an MBA in St. Louis, and would work for a publishing house, Doubleday, home of, I'm sure, some of your favorite authors. From there, she would work at universities, collecting degrees and diplomas, you know, sure, why not? And having a pretty sweet job like that, she lived in the affluent Oak Park, uh, outside Chicago, and she lived there with her husband and daughter. And the Von Weiss Max were socialites, bout town. Sheila was married to James Mack, a well-known jazz composer. This was his third marriage. In 1996, at age 43, Sheila gave birth to her daughter, Heather Mack. The Macks were a very close family, especially daughter Heather to her dad, James. They absolutely just adored each other. As wealthy folk, the world was their oyster. And one thing James loved to share with his daughter was, well, the world. They'd often travel far and wide, exotic locations, fancy hotels. This is the life. Until tragedy struck. In 2006, when Heather was just 10 years old, the family, while on holiday in Athens, Greece, were, uh, well, James, he had a pulmonary embolism. He died at age 76, passing away in the hotel room, beside Heather and Sheila. That was hard, and so then it would be just Heather and Sheila. James had made sure, you know, his family would be taken care of. He had a trust fund set up for Heather. She'd be a millionaire by the time she was 21. But Heather didn't really care. The loss of her dad destroyed the young girl. She, she never really got over it. As she grew into her teenage years, it just kept eating away at her and it led to trouble. She spiraled into depression, lashed into parties, drugs, alcohol, all that. Started hanging out with the, well, not the right crowd. Heather stopped getting on well with her mother. Uh, it, in fact, it went the opposite of being well. She would run away from time to time, and it was at one of these many, many parties that young Heather would meet a guy named Tommy, Tommy Schaefer. What up, y'all? This Shafe, man. It's my uh, first song, the demo. Hope y'all enjoy this. Check it out. He was quite the guy. But when he wasn't Tommy Schaefer, he was Tommy XX. You better watch yourself. Check out his tunes. Just so you know, I've replaced the music with another one of Tommy's tracks. Uh, that's because the music on this video is, uh, it's copywritten. Uh, don't worry, you're not missing out. He was from Chicago, came from a much less well-off background than Heather did. However, his mother gave him everything, even sending him to a great school in the affluent Oak Park. He decided, pfft, come on, education, smeducation, right? He's gonna be a hip hop artiste. Right? So, listen up. Yo, I'm Tommy X. It's my city. 
<laughs> Chicago, baby. I kind of realized that I had an ear for music, and uh, and I like making music. Well, I like listening to it just as much as I like making it. Uh, and there's certain a certain feel that you get from making music. It's like um, a lot of people. Well, everyone listens to it. Everyone hears it. But it's really about how music make you makes you feel, which brings out you know the best music and the most memorable music, music that stays around for a long time. Um, so I, I try to recreate the, uh, the music. His self-funded artistic endeavors uh, surprisingly didn't pay the bills. He would sleep on friends' couches and so on and so forth, eventually meeting Heather, a Heather who was still grieving her musician father's death. So while Heather and Tommy, they were, you know, kicking off, so were Heather and Sheila, but like in the opposite way. They'd fight a lot. Sheila not too keen on the old party, and she'd much rather Heather would join her at a... like one of these violin recitals. He gave his debut at the Berlin Philharmonic with the Berlin Symphony at the age of 12, and he was a featured soloist at age 13 in the Coconuts Violin and Chair number 2. He won first prizes at the International Violin Competition in 1993, the Hans Eisler Competition in Berlin in 1995, among other awards. He has attended Juilliard, and he received additional postgraduate education at Northwestern. So, in 2014, Sheila decided to book a trip for them together, like they used to do with their dad. Go to an exotic location, spend some quality time together. Just the two of them. Or so she thought. On the 4th of August, 2014, they boarded a plane bound for Indonesia, spending 10 days at a luxury resort. The St. Regis Bali Resort. Don't, um... I think I've ever spent any time at a hotel that has a gate. It was a week later that a taxi driver, he was dropping off some passengers at the famed St. Regis, that as he was getting ready to pull off, a young couple flagged him down. They popped the boot, lashed a suitcase into the trunk of his taxi and said, here, let's, we're just checking out. Be right back, you know. Don't go anywhere. Keep the engine running. The taxi driver said fine. He didn't say that after waiting for 30 minutes with no sign of them. So he got out of his taxi, popped the boot, and then had a look at that suitcase they put in there. Because it looked like this. He called the police, and when they arrived and opened it up, there was a woman stuffed inside. It was not a big luggage, so they were, um, economical packers. She had been beaten to death. So the police investigation began, they went through everybody who was staying at the hotel, the descriptions to see if they could match who this was, eventually landing on Sheila. And they saw Sheila wasn't staying at the hotel alone. They went up and knocked on her door to no answer. They opened the hotel room and it was in quite the state. Blood everywhere, broken glass, looked like it had been a fruit bowl. The handle of it was bloody, it looked like someone smashed it off someone's head. Someone was beaten to death. So they knew who the victim was, but where was Heather? An autopsy found Sheila's cause of death was asphyxiation from a broken nose. She also had a broken neck. Weirdly, you know, as the police started questioning everybody, a desk clerk at the hotel said, she actually came down a few hours before the suitcase. She came down to report Heather missing. As they were just about to call the police, who wanders in but Heather? Not alone. She was holding hands with Tommy XX, EXXX, if you ask me. This was a surprise to Sheila that Tommy was there. Not a pleasant one at all. Sheila had wanted them to spend time, you know, together, just the two of them. And she wanted to get Heather away from what she saw were like these bad influences back in Chicago. Right there in the lobby, a screaming match began. Heather telling Sheila, that Tommy had flown in to surprise her. And that being apart for, you know, the seven days it was at this point was just too darn much. Now, Tommy had no money, which Sheila knew all too well, and so she accused Heather of stealing her credit card to pay for his ticket. A ticket costing about 10,000 bucks. Not only that, Heather used Sheila's card to pay for his room at this very fancy hotel. So after screaming at each other for a bit, they all went back to the rooms. Heather and Sheila went to their room, Tommy went to his. He wouldn't stay there. CCTV would show Tommy leaving his room, going to Sheila and Heather's, 
and then Tommy and Heather going between them for quite some time. Heather returned a little bit later to the uh, desk clerk and had a question. A little question. Do you mind? Say, you don't have any duct tape by any chance, do you? Don't ask what it's for. So things were not looking good. Eventually, they came out with the suitcase. They dropped it off at a taxi and then did a legger. However, bingo, in the safe in Sheila's room, they found Heather's passport. So they knew they wouldn't be able to flee the country. They were somewhere in town and alerted the media. They were eventually tracked down to a motel. It didn't take long. The victim's 19-year-old daughter, Heather Louise Mack, and her boyfriend, Tommy Schaefer, seen here, have been arrested. Forensic investigators say the victim suffered severe blunt force injuries. From the existing wound, we found that the victim was hit by a blunt object on her face and head. A woman is found murdered in the Indonesian resort island of Bali. The Associated Press confirms that she is from Chicago, reportedly with ties to West Suburban Oak Park. Now, Sheila Von Wies Max, 19-year-old daughter Heather and her 21-year-old boyfriend Tommy Schaefer were arrested Wednesday. Police say the two checked out of the hotel and were trying to flee when they were taken into custody. No cameras. Why is the media here? The young couple was apprehended Wednesday at a nearby budget hotel after a day-long police chase. They said when the police came in, hey, thanks, you know, finally, a gang came in and killed Sheila and they kidnapped us. So thanks for rescuing us. They just escaped with their lives. Apparently not knowing CCTV was all over the hotel. Literally like the worst excuse ever. They were arrested on the 13th of August and they kept up with this terrible story. They said all three of them had been kidnapped by some street gang and only they had escaped, and they were on the run, not from the police, but from the gang. So I guess, you know, they must have gone back to the hotel room and killed Sheila. Or something, is she dead? <sighs> then, Tommy tried a different tack, okay? Now, what he said was this. It was a surprise. He had shown up as a surprise. The surprise was for Sheila, because Heather and Tommy had good news for her. Heather was pregnant. Sheila wasn't as happy as they thought she'd be, and, uh, well, according to Tommy, she went crazy mad and said she'd kill the baby. This led to a scuffle, and one thing led to another. Tommy said she was choking him out on the floor when he grabbed a fruit bowl and bounced it off her head repeatedly. That was one story. Another good one was what the phone records told. See, the FBI became involved in the case. You know, it's... it's Three Americans in a foreign country, one of them dead, two of them arrested. They started, you know, looking into it from their side. They learned that Heather and Tommy were obviously mad about each other. Sheila, not so much. She took Heather's phone even from her, so Heather had to get a secret phone to communicate with them. They wanted to be alone, like alone, alone together. Heather had millions in the bank account, but she couldn't get it until she turned 21. She was currently 19. So, they didn't want to wait those two years though, so, hmm. How else could they get it? The stupidest idea possible. Tommy was also in contact with a cousin of his named Robert Bibbs, who was advising Tommy on how to do it. How to get that inheritance. The reward was a piece of the inheritance pie. That Robert Bibbs, he would get nine years for his uh, texts to Tommy advising him on how to do it. So it took them a bit of time to figure it out, calling each other Bonnie and Clyde. The Bali trip, they thought, would be perfect, and they would make it look like an accident. They'd, you know, make her trip and fall at some point, uh, multiple times. Here's a picture of Tommy leaving his room, going down to Heather and Sheila's room with the fruit bowl under his t-shirt. So he went down to their room, hid in the bathroom, and at one point jumped out and well, began beating Sheila to death with it. Tommy seemingly had a fair idea of what was going to happen when he posted on Facebook, leaving for Indonesia might not come back. They were both charged with murder. And uh, in Indonesia, if you get charged with murder, you can face a firing squad. They, they don't, don't really muck about over there. They both still stuck with the self-defense idea that Sheila attacked him. 
They hadn't planned on killing anyone. In prison, Heather would tell uh, people a bit more about her and her mother's relationship. She told how her mother drank constantly, would abuse and shout at her, scratched her, put out cigarettes on her. Though, of course, there are two sides to every story. This is the other one. Neighbors said they fought all the time. They would call the police on each other regularly. It was abusive from both sides, and Sheila's arm had been broken once in a fight. Sheila wrote in an email to a friend. I think that there has to be something done with Heather, because it is not possible for me to continue living like this. All of her lies, stealing, and not knowing where she goes each and every day, this has been four years now, and I simply cannot do it any longer. Heather was violent tonight and left. When you live the way I've lived with Heather for so many years, the problems become almost your normal way of life. I am really scared of what she may do next. I am more frightened than ever. I will keep in touch. That email was sent while they were in Bali. So I actually don't know how their holiday went until, well, you know, shite probably. Anyway, they were both saying they were being abused by the other and in a six month period up until August 2014, the police were called over 60 times to their place. The prison Heather is in seems, uh, hmm. Well, I'd personally rather not be there, but Heather has a phone and access to the internet, and seems to be having a grand old time. She was happy to yap away in interviews and so on and so forth. What's, what's that phrase where it's like, I won't do it again, like, ah, ah, like, ah. It's like, ah, <laughs> Heather would give birth in prison to a girl named Stella before the trial. A trial where their fates would be decided by a panel of judges. They were convicted. Which, as I said, could lead to blindfold cigarette bang. Their fates wouldn't actually be decided until 2018, if you can believe that. Heather using that time to become a celebrity. You had a horrible picture of me last time. I'm mad at you, Daniel. Yeah. Horrible. I was like, no, it's it's Johnny. You are. So why why publish it? It even says on there, probably Daniel, whatever. You want to see? No, it wasn't you. You're fine. Daniel. Oh, fucking Daniel. Daniel. Worst picture, Stella's picture is Stella. She's like, horrible picture, Daniel. Her baby could remain with her in prison until she turned two. Then she'd be given to a guardian. In 2017, Heather posted uh, this video on YouTube. Well, it's not actually entirely sure if Heather posted it or someone using her name for the channel posted it. Either way, it got uploaded, and it's Heather. A full confession. Okay, so... This is a video that I need to make a lot of the times. Since I've been a kid, I've heard the truth sets you free, the truth sets you free. And I never understood, but I'm Heather Mack, and I want to be set free. I don't want to live in a lie anymore. When I was 10, my mother killed my father in a hotel in Athens, Greece. Also lies. Two weeks before I came to Bali, I found out that she killed my father. And I made it up in my heart, in my mind, my soul in my blood, in the oxygen running through my body, that I wanted to kill my mother. It's proven that her dad died of a pulmonary embolism, so... First, I asked Tommy Schaefer to help me find somebody to kill my mom for $50,000, and he said no. After that, I got this whole new 
savage idea in my head that I wanted to kill her in a hotel room because she had killed my father in a hotel room. We were going to Bali, so I began to plot. I began turning off Tommy's phone, taking Tommy's phone when he was asleep, starting in Chicago, taking Tommy's phone and having conversations between Tommy and myself, texting myself, having fake conversations, and then deleting them before he could see them. I didn't want to get arrested by myself in a different country. So I came to Bali and I told Tommy that he was going to come here for a vacation. I trapped him here. And that is what I regret. I don't regret killing my mother. I killed her myself. And I'm sorry, Tommy Schaefer. I'm sorry. I love you. I really love you, and if I could go back, I would do it myself. And I'm sorry that everyone who ever knew you now thinks you're a murderer when you're not. I'm sorry you won't be able to get a job. I'm sorry everybody thinks that you're some crazy killer. This is the truth. She takes the blame for everything, that Tommy was innocent, all that. Her lawyer, not a fan of that. It's not the verdict today, is it? Yeah, but what, what, what sentence are you requesting? Okay. Plus, I'm innocent. Yeah, I'm innocent. Look at her, she's having a great time. Am I though? In the end, Tommy was sentenced to 18 years in prison. Heather got 10 years. Those are tears of relief, by the way. That's a pretty light sentence for murdering your mama. Heather and Tommy remain in prison in Indonesia to this day. So that ends that one. Pretty, uh, weird story of uh, greed. Tommy became a born-again Christian in prison, baptizing quite a few people. Heather, it seemed like she loved the finer things in life. Hell, that was why she killed her mother, and she ended up with... A grand total of nothing. Though she still does get uh, quite a bit of attention. A very light sentence to only 10 years for doing what she did. The judge would say, you know, uh, a, a child should grow up without a mother. So that's why that. And um, it w she wouldn't get a dime from her mother's estate. That would be settled. The money would go to her daughter, Stella. So at least, at least that's something. I mean, you got to give Heather some credit. She's definitely making the most of a pretty gnarly situation. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you uh, taking the time. Here, listen, uh, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next old one. Till then, please look after yourselves. I love you. Mike out.